Here's another question from College Board to, uh, from their study guide. Um, and you can see these questions in our quizzes online in College Board. So the allowed energy levels of hypothetical atom have principal quantum numbers of um, one, two, three, and four energies of negative eight el electrovolts, negative five electrovolts, negative two electrovolts, and negative one electrovolt. Draw the energy level diagram for the atom. Label each level with uh, the appropriate energy and principal quantum number. Calculate the frequency of a proton that will excite the atom from its ground state to state um, n equals to 3. A proton of wavelength 124 nanometers is incident on the atom and causes an electron in the ground state to be ejected from the atom. Neglecting relativistic effects, calculate the speed of the electron. And again, try to solve questions before I uh, record for you the video. Um, do the work at first on your own, even if you make mistakes or you find out something you do not know, it's better to find out uh, before you watch the video. So you watch the video and understand what you didn't know. Give you energy levels um, of the electron on different states, and if you remember that the voltage is equal to work done on the charge. So if I want to solve the equation for work, I have the charge times the voltage. So work is energy, so I'm going to write E for energy or energy. And that is equal to, in our case, it's an electron. So instead of the charge, I can write E and times the voltage. This is where electron volt comes from. This is how much energy it has. So let's say one electron volt is equal to 1.6, 10 to the negative 19 joules. It's one electron charge times one volt that gives you this much energy and two electron volts is going to be 3.2 10 to negative 19 joules so when they ask you to draw energy level diagram for the atom label each level with appropriate energy and principal quantum number so the first energy level is going to be uh, they tell you here So here I have the first energy level is going to be, so this is the first one, and it is negative 8 electron volts. And the next one is going to be negative 5 electron volts, the second one. Then the next one is going to be negative 2 electron volts, and finally negative 1 electron volt. So this is the third, and this is the fourth one. And the explanation to this is this. So if there is an electron on the um, base level or the ground level, the first one, and there is a specific photon traveling, when this photon hits an electron, it will need eight electron volt energy in order to be ejected from the atom so if it gets exactly eight electron volts um, of energy the electron can jump out of the atom so it can be released if um, an electron is at so and also electron can only get this amount of energy so it can get three electron volts to jump to the second level or it can get three electron volts to get to jump to the third level or it could get one electron volt to jump to the fourth level and if your energy of the photon is coming and has exactly one electron volt it can pull that electron out and it has more than one electron volt when it pulls it out it uses one electron volt to pull it out. Let's say this one was three electron volts. 
so it has more energy than it's needed to pull the electron out one electron volt is used to pull it out and the rest of the energy will give the kinetic energy uh, to the electron but your answer for this question is just this part so this would be your answer for the first part for the second one say calculate the frequency of a photon that will excite the atom from its ground state to level three so if your atom is on the ground state and you want to excite it to level three how much energy do you need it looks like you need six electron volt of energy to bring the atom from its ground state to third level state and energy in quantum physics we know that it equals to uh, Planck's constant times the frequency and they ask you how much frequency needed so you set the energy is equal to Planck's constant and Planck's constant can be written in electron volts or in joules so if you want Planck's constant in electron volts that's going to be so Planck's constant in electron volts is equal to 4.14 10 to the negative 15 um, electron volts times seconds or Planck's constant can be um, in joules times seconds which is equal to um, 6 63 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds and because our energy is given in electron volts i'm gonna plug in 4 14 10 to the negative 15 and then i have the frequency so the frequency is equal to 6 divided by 4 14 10 to the negative 15 which gives me a frequency is equal to 145 10 to the 15 Hertz and then they say photon of wavelength of and they give you the wavelength so here is the wavelength 124 nanometers is incident on the atom and causes an electron in the ground state to be ejected from the atom Neglecting the relativistic effects, calculate the speed of the electron. So from Einstein's um, theory of photoelectric effect, we know that if an electron or if the photon has the energy, which is equal to H times the frequency, this energy could be used from my first explanation of how electron will jump from state to state. Um, the work needed to pull out that electron from uh, let's say the ground level so if you have negative eight electron volt here and you had negative one electron volt here so you needed um you needed the photon of at least seven electron volts to pull that uh, electron from its ground state to the um to the outer shell state so this energy that is needed to pull it out from actually the energy that is the threshold energy this would be the energy the threshold energy this would be it is needed to pull electron from its outer shell from the um, um, to bump it out from the atom so and this one is called the threshold frequency or the threshold um, work and or energy and the rest of the energy that was is going to be stored in electron is going to be the kinetic energy so the the formula states that the energy that photons carries is going to be used to pull out the electron from its um, atom plus the kinetic energy that is going to be stored in the electron after it leaves the atom so in our problem we have the um, the wavelength of the um, of our photon 
So we can rewrite this part of the equation as h and then instead of the frequency um, it's going to be the speed divided by the wavelength and equals to they say electron is going to be pulled out from the ground state so you need work energy that is needed to pull out from the ground state is um, going to be negative 8 electron volts in our case so you need threshold um, energy and the rest is going to be one half m v squared where the mass of the electron so um, because everything is going to be in um, you have the velocity so everything has to be converted into joules so i have to plug in i wrote my numbers right there on the top i have to plug in um, everything in joules so i have 667 663 10 to the negative 34 speed of light is 310 to the 8 wavelength they give you 124 10 to the negative 9 is equal to i have to convert 8 electron volts into joules so i have um, 8 times um, electron is 1.6 10 to the negative 19 so this is converting 8 electron volts into joules because 1 electron volt 1 electron volt um, in joules is going to be 1.6 1 10 to the negative 19 joules and that is added to one half. The mass of the electron is 9, 11, 10 to the negative 31st, and then you have V squared. So I just rewrote the whole equation for you. Um, so if you plug in the numbers into calculator and find what the velocity is equal to, let me see what I'm gonna get as a number. So I got velocity is equal to um, 0.83 10 to the 6 meters per second. Mm -hmm. And for uh, the last part, B, they say the ejected electron then enters a region of space that contains a constant uniform magnetic field directed into the plane of the page. The electron is moving to the left in the plane of the page when it enters the field so i have an electron so right here is your electron and it enters the page this way and it looks like my electric field is into the page you see the crosses that means into the page so if i have my right hand what i have to do is to point my fingers in the direction of the magnetic field and to um, to turn my finger, the thumb, in the direction of the electron. So this is the velocity of the electron. And the force acting um, on the electron is not going to be out of your palm, it's going to be on the other side of the hand, not out of the palm. So that's going to be the direction of the force. So try to figure out how to place your right hand. So your fingers point into the page because that's the magnetic field, right? The magnetic field is away from you. So your fingers point into the page, but your thumb is pointing in the direction of the motion of the electron. And then your force that is acting on the electron is going to be out, coming out, not out of your palm, but on the other side of the hand. So try to see if you can do this and pause it if you don't want me to give you an answer quicker. And what I see the force is gonna be acting up. So for um, the first part and B, they ask on the figure above, draw a, a possible path of the electron as it 
travels through the region of the magnetic field described the would happen to the speed of an electron as it passes through the field and explain why this happens so as the electron is entering it will feel force acting up and that means electron is going to start moving in this direction and then to make the electron travel in straight line to the left through the magnetic field an electric field can be applied in the region what is the direction of the uh, of the required electric field so if you want the electron to travel in a straight line you need to add plates with positively charged at the bottom high potential and with a low potential on the top so negatively charged at the bottom at the top then that will straighten up the electron also when the electron is in the magnetic field um, the its velocity does not change its magnitude of its velocity does not change the velocity uh, the speed of the electron will stay the same its direction will be changing but its magnitude will stay the same the speed and um, and the force is going to be acting perpendicular to the velocity the force acts as a centripetal force and there is going to be no work done as um, the force is perpendicular to the motion of the direction of the electron because the work is equal to force times the distance and then cosine theta and then cosine of 90 degrees gives you zero so when electron is moving in a circular motion um, no work is done on the electron and for the second part also you, you can say that that electron is going to be moving in opposite direction of electric field lines and electric field lines go from positive to negative so you have to have a positively charged plate at the bottom electric field for electric field and negative on the top so the electric field line is going to be moving uh, upward and electron will want to go downward but uh, you need to make sure that your electric field force is equal to the magnetic field force so that means that you have e times q of the electron must be equal to q v b and the electron is entering perpendicular so i don't have to write the sign q and q will be cancelled so your electric field needs to be equal to the uh, magnetic field acting on the electron and then the electron is going to go in a straight line